Welcome to the fifth video in our series on joint and byproduct costing. In this video, we are going to look at our final method of allocating the joint costs, namely the constant gross profit percentage method. As with all our previous videos, we will begin this video by revising the basic idea behind joint and byproduct costing. We will then understand the key ideas behind the constant gross profit percentage method. Once we have understood these key ideas, we will then look at a practical example in which we allocate the joint costs to the joint products using the constant gross profit percentage method. We will then consider the advantages and disadvantages of this method and conclude by discussing under what circumstances it is suitable. So remember, in a joint process, we take our raw materials, labor, and overheads, and we subject them to a manufacturing process in order to get out multiple products simultaneously. For joint processes, we cannot distinguish between the different products until a specific point known as the split-off point. Before the split-off point, we cannot trace the costs to the individual products. After the split-off point, where the products are separately identifiable, the products may be subject to further processing. These further processing costs can be traced to the individual products to which they relate. So, what is the constant gross profit percentage method all about? You should recall from our video on the net realizable value method that each product ended up earning a different gross profit percentage. It could be argued that because all the products are inseparable and manufactured in the same process, all the products should earn an identical gross profit percentage. This is the key idea behind the constant gross profit percentage method. The method assumes that the relationship between the sales value and the costs incurred for each joint product is the same. This results in each product having an identical gross profit percentage. Let us use a small example to see how the constant gross profit percentage method works. You should recognize this example from our previous videos. We have a company called Joint that produces three products in a joint process. The total joint costs amount to 400,000 Rand. We have already deducted the net realizable value of any byproducts in arriving at this 400,000 Rand. Always remember to adjust the joint costs for any byproducts, scrap, and waste before allocating the joint costs to the joint product. We are then given details of the three products at the split-off point when they become separately identifiable. We are given the output in units, the sales value per unit at the split-off point, any further processing costs incurred, and then a final sales value after further processing has taken place. Now remember, the idea behind the constant gross profit percentage method is that all three joint products must end up with identical gross profit percentages at the end. Therefore, like the net realizable value method, we focus on the output, the further processing costs, and the final sales value. We can ignore the sales value at split-off point information. When applying this method, we begin by calculating the joint process's combined gross profit percentage. To do this, we need to calculate the combined sales value and then subtract all processing costs to arrive at the process's combined gross profit. To calculate the combined sales value, we take each individual product's number of units produced and the final sales price per unit, which we obtain from the scenario. We multiply these together to get the total final sales value for each product individually. We can then add these all together and arrive at the combined sales value of the joint process. To calculate the process's gross profit, we need to deduct the joint costs which were given in the scenario of 400,000 Rand. We then add up the further processing costs of each individual product and deduct this total as well. The total here was given in the scenario as 210,000 Rand. 
After deducting these amounts, we arrive at a combined gross profit of 205,000 Rand. Now to calculate the gross profit percentage, we divide the combined gross profit of 205,000 Rand by the combined sales value of 815,000 Rand to arrive at a combined gross profit percentage of 25.15%. Now that we know that each product must have a gross profit percentage of 25.15%, let us allocate out our joint costs. Step 1 is to calculate each product's total cost. So we know that gross profit is equal to sales less cost of sales. We know what the sales value for each product is, and we can calculate the gross profit using the 25.15% we calculated earlier. Therefore, the only unknown is the cost of sales. We can manipulate the formula to make cost of sales the subject. This is what we'll do in the first three columns of this table. On our previous slide, we calculated our total sales value for each product. So let us fill this in. We can calculate our gross profit as the sales value multiplied by the gross profit percentage of 25.15%, which we calculated earlier. When doing this calculation, note that I have not rounded off the gross profit percentage. We can now subtract the gross profit from the sales value to arrive at the total costs. Now for step two. We know that the total cost of sales would be the sum of our further processing costs and our joint costs. We have just calculated our total costs in step 1, and we have been given our further processing costs in the scenario. Therefore, the only unknown is the joint costs. If we manipulate this formula, we can calculate our joint costs as our total cost of sales less our further processing costs. This is what we will do in the second half of the table. So we have already filled in our total cost of sales. Let us fill in our further processing costs from the scenario. We can then subtract the further processing costs from the total costs to arrive at the joint costs allocated. You will notice that the total joint costs allocated amounts to 400,000 Rand, which is the amount we needed to allocate. This next slide now is just a quick proof that all the products and the joint process as a whole have the same gross profit percentage of 25.15%. Given what we have now seen, let us consider the suitability of the constant gross profit percentage method. If we look at the advantages of the constant gross profit percentage method, we see that it addresses the problems encountered under the physical measures method. This method can be used when the outputs are measured in different forms, such as liters or kilograms, and our inventory will be correctly valued so that we don't need a write-down to the net realizable value. Further, we see that it addresses the disadvantage under the sales value at split-off method. For the constant gross profit percentage method, we don't need to have a sales value at the split-off point. Finally, it also addresses the weakness of the net realizable value method in that the gross profit percentage for all products and the joint process as a whole will be the same. The disadvantage, however, is that the underlying assumption of all products having the same gross profit percentage is questionable. So given these issues, we need to ask when is it suitable to use the constant gross profit percentage method? It is suitable when the sales value at the split-off point is unavailable and when the assumption that all products should have the same gross profit percentage makes sense. This brings us to the end of the constant gross profit percentage method. Join us in our next video where we wrap up our series on joint and byproduct costing by considering whether joint costs are relevant for decision-making purposes. See you next time.